This is one of the things that saved my life when I was on Okinawa. I could remember things like To Be or Not To Be, other sonnets, and under heavy fire, I mean, there was one night, 187 of us subjected to Japanese fire, 27 of us were left alive. Mm. Well, it was so horrific and so mind-boggling. Your mind is apt to switch. Um, but in the, in the worst moments, I would think of things that I had learned that mm. meant a great deal to me and say them to myself. And they literally saved my life because I would see men much stronger than myself get up under enemy fire and walk straight into it. They called it battle fatigue. And with the help of the chaplain, who was a great influence, because um, he said to me once when I was near breaking, he said, Bill, none of us want to be here, not one of us. But we have something to do here, and if we don't feel that we are necessary and a part of this and can be helpful, we might as well be dead. So here, have a drink of brandy and eat something. And I did. Um, when, when you were saying those snippets of verse to yourself in those kind of horrific circumstances, they obviously gave you, what, an escape or courage or memories of better life? Or what is it about the verse? Because you weren't remembering headlines from the newspapers back home. No. You were remembering Shakespeare. Something that was beautiful rather than the horror that I was surrounded by. Um, and what is it? Can you describe the beauty in the language? Can you articulate that? <laughs> it's contained everywhere. I mean, I was just looking at um, some of the sonnets which I haven't read. Um, but for instance, sonnet number 29, when in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate. Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I most enjoy contented least, Yet in these thoughts, myself almost despising, haply I think on thee. And then in my state, like to the lark at the break of day arising from sullen earth, sings heaven, hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. And immediately after this is the one that I'm going to use in Grand Night, which comes up on the 23rd. <clears throat> now, this is a period in my life which is very difficult for me because I realize I'm coming to the end of it. I mean, not only of my life, but I'm coming to the end of my career now, too. And yet I'm surrounded by these young people who are extremely helpful. <laughs> I mean, they help me on and off stage. They feed me. I'm kind of an artifact, I guess, now. <laughs> yeah. um, when I sit backstage waiting to go on and as you like it, they all come up and kiss me before they go on. And Stephen Russell said, hey, sir, what the hell are you? Some kind of Blarney Stone? <laughs> I said, no, I'm just sitting here. But I noticed that about 10 minutes later, he came over and kissed me. <laughs> so I guess there's some sort of... <laughs> They feel that I'm a, a bit of a legend. Well, I've never considered myself a living, a legend. I am living, but that's... But maybe you're a talisman. Yeah. I mean, if a young actor can look at you and say, well, he actually acted and created for his entire life, and he's still doing it, maybe there's hope for me. Maybe Bill Needles has cut a path that I can follow. 